Hi, this is Vicki with Learning Home Volunteers. And with the beginning of school, in my mind at least, comes the beginning of apple season. There are 2,500 different kinds of apples grown in the United States and over 7,500 different types in the world. Apple trees can be found in every single state in the United States. And the biggest apple producing nation is China. They produced, get this, 44 million tons of apples. That is a lot of apples. Now, obviously, apples are really versatile. You know, we can eat them right off the tree, which is delightful. But they're used for so much more. We see them used in sweets, which we're going to actually do this um, learning session. They're used, obviously, to make juice. They're even used to make um, alcohol by fermenting the apples and um, a little applesauce, which we'll do again. Well, we hope in this session, your little one will get a chance to try a number of different types of apples, explore the different things that you can use apples for, and even play a game with apples. So you ready to get started? Well, as always, we have three great books for our session on apples, and what a better place to start the, the beginning of our apple lessons than the beginning of the day that apples were picked. Our first book, Apple Picking Day, um, is a, a little tiny book which explains how they're picked and what they're used for. Our second book, um, which is the first idea that always come to my mind when I think of apples is apple pie. This book, An Apple Pie for Dinner, is about a woman who wanted an apple pie for dinner, but she didn't have any apples at all. How can she get some apples so she can have that delicious pie? Well, our last book, 10 Apples Up on Top, is a Dr. Seuss classic. And like a lot of his books, it's a silly book, um, which is about three friends who try to balance as many apples as they can get on their head as possible. And we're going to start, actually, um, our learning session in this week with a little apple bouncing of our own. Well, let's do our first um, learning activity, uh, which is bobbing for apples. Bobbing for apples is actually so much fun, and it can be done in a number of different ways. My favorite is just to put apples in a bowl and let the child uh, with water and let the child try to get the apple by capturing it with their mouth. Another way, which I saw last year, um, was in the park, they strung a line of string from one tree to the other and then hung the apples by their stem onto that line and the child walks up to the apple and tries to capture it by biting it without using their hands. You know, some kids don't like putting their face in water. Um, so if they're not up to trying to capture the apple with their mouth, you can try using tongs. Whatever method you use, it'll be great fun. We would love to see some pictures of your child's att attempts. Well, as promised, activity number two is balancing apples. And before we eat all our apples, we thought a little balancing of apples ourselves just to see how hard it really would be for our three friends to balance 10 apples on top of their heads. But let's start with something way easier than balancing apples on your head. Let's try balancing on top of tubes. In your box, we've included uh, a number of different size tubes, um, which you can you know, certainly look around your house and maybe find some other things to try to balance on, maybe some cups or bowls, whatever makes sense um, for you to actually try. And I guess the question we want to be asking our learners is what makes the balancing easier? Is it the height of how tall we have to balance it? Is it the size of the base? Is it something else, the way we place the apple on the tubes? I don't know, but we hope that your learners' experiments will help us find the answers. After you research this issue, try balancing apples one on top of each other like our friends do in the book. Was that easier or harder than the tubes? We would love to see some video. Well, this is activity number three, and we're actually going to do a taste test and a few more things. The first part, obviously, is the best part about tasting the apples. And we've included in your set a couple of different types of red apples and then a green or yellow apple. So my first question for the learners is, do we think that the color of the apple will make the taste any different? Or 
Is it simply the size of the apple or the types of lines are on it? I don't know. And then finally, you know, do they have a favorite? Is there a better apple than the others as they go through tasting these things? So to start the experiment, we want to first clean the apples and then the uh, adult can core and quarter some apples. The child then can use a regular dinner knife, um, you know, something not that sharp to cut up little chunks for their tasting test. Um, so the tasting test, they should taste a sample of each of the apple types and you can help them fill out the form by identifying what type of apple it came from and then help them choose how they thought it tasted. Was it sour or sweet or, you know, some sort of emoji that would help them be able to tell that. And then color the apple to match the type of apple that it is. Was it a yellow one, a red one, a red with stripes? And then was it good? Tell us, what did they think? And then when they finished tasting all three, which one did they like best? We'll sound out our poll later on um, in the learning session to see what everyone thinks is the best apples. Well, the second part of this activity is to help provide some words to the parts of the apple that they got to see up front and close. And we provided some cards to help with this. So going from uh, left to right and top to bottom, we have uh, apple seeds, which is how all apples start. Uh, the apple slices, which they cut their little pieces from. The stem, which is what connects the apple to the tree. Obviously, the apple tree itself. And besides apples, the tree has leaves. And then the whole process starts all over again when the apple flowers actually create the little tiny apples that become the apples that we eat. And your child use all those words? Can they say them in English and in Spanish or whatever your native language is? I don't know. Find out. Well, our last activity for this week is actually making apple pie. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing more fun than making an apple pie. We've included a little pie tin or maybe two. Uh, and we're going to make a pie without a bottom crust and top it with a delicious crumbled crust. The first thing you need to do is peel and core an apple. You want to cut the apple into slices and then have your child using their dinner knife, cut it into small, equal size pieces um, so that the apples will cook uniformly in the, in the pie. First thing that we'll do with those apple slices is put them in a bowl and then we'll add a tablespoon of flour, a teaspoon of sugar, a teaspoon of butter, and sprinkle some cinnamon on it if you have it, and then mix them up so that the apples are covered with those different things. And then we want to transfer them into your tins. Next, we're actually gonna make our crumbled crust. It's super easy. You'll need some sugar, butter, and flour. I like to use two types of sugar, the brown sugar and the white sugar, but if you decide you wanna use all white or all brown, just simply add the two uh, amounts together to get your final amount. So in a bowl, you want to add two tablespoons of softened butter, three teaspoons of brown sugar, three teaspoons of white sugar, and six teaspoons of flour, and then combine it so it kind of looks crumbly like we see in the picture. You'll take this and then sprinkle it on top of your pies, your apples and your pie, and it'll look something like this. Next, we're actually ready to begin to bake. Um, so you wanna preheat your oven to 400 degrees and then put your little apple pie tin on a baking sheet. And this will make sure that if your pie actually bubbles over that it doesn't get all over the oven and it will make it easier to get that hot tin out of the oven because you'll just pull the sheet out. Go ahead and put the sheet into the oven. You'll know it's done when the crumble is brown like it's in the picture and the apples are done. You wanna check the apples by putting a knife through the apples. They should be slightly soft. Now to the best part, eating. Ooh. You can eat the pie hot or cold, or maybe somewhere in between, you choose. I can't think of a better way to end the week. Um, we'll see you next week, and we'll do some more apple activities.